Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce a new kind of programming uh, called object-oriented programming. It's often abbreviated OOP. And um, kind of looking back at the previous course, whether that was 301 or 220 for you, there were a lot of fundamental things we learned. We learned about um, you know, functions, loops, uh, data types like lists and dictionaries, um, a lot of the fundamentals. And I would say if there was one fundamental thing that we didn't have time for that is really important, that would probably be object-oriented programming. Um, and so we're going to be using this new style for the rest of um, the semester. And also, if you go on and read other books, for example, um, a lot of kind of machine learning books out there just are going to assume that you know how to do object-oriented programming and, uh, and what the code examples are. Right? So it's a very important topic. And um, well, they call it object-oriented programming, and you've been dealing with objects for a long time. You've seen how you can create multiple list objects or multiple dictionary objects. And so it's kind of a funny name. I think really what object-oriented programming about is not creating new objects, but creating new types of objects. And, and the picture that people often ha have or make is that uh, it's almost imagined that you were making cookies, right? Cookies are like objects, and... Uh, there's different types of objects. Maybe I have list objects, right? So there's only one list type, uh, but from that list type in Python, I can create lots of different list objects, right? I can kind of punch out a lot of different uh, cookie objects from that one uh, kind of frame type. And um, there's a lot of types that are built into Python, right? We have lists, we have dictionaries, strings, um, you know these. And what we want to do now is learn how we can make new types for very specific use cases. So for example, um, could I have a, a movie type or a person type or maybe a type for soccer players? Right, That's what we're going to be doing uh, going forward. And, and not only is that going to help us make our own new types, but it'll help us understand things like um, pandas. Right, When whoever was building pandas, they had to have a data frame type and a series type. And I'll have some examples kind of to show at least a little bit about how they built those um, new things. Uh, by the way, I made those uh, cookies myself, not to brag. But um, okay, moving along. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, classes and kind of an analogy uh, between uh, classes and class objects to uh, dictionaries. So with dictionaries, you've seen that you can put a lot of different kinds of information in there. Um, for example, I could create um, a dictionary to represent a movie object, right? So I could have uh, a bunch of different movies, all, all there are these dictionaries. And those would probably have keys and values that might give me things like the movie title, and uh, you know, title might be a key, and then the actual title might be a value associated with that string title. And I could have things like, well, the year the movie was released. And, um, and so I could use these dictionaries to represent movies. I could also use dictionaries to represent um, people. So here I'm creating three people, and uh, they're slightly differently. I'm, I'm kind of adding in the keys and values afterwards. I'm going to set a first name uh, for each of those, and these happen to be your um, your TAs. And, um, and and so one more thing here, right? So we can see that there's this special syntax for creating dictionaries. It's the two curly braces, right? Like right here. That's one way to create dictionaries. Um, the other way is that I can say the type name. So all of these are of type dict, and so I can say dict. And then parentheses, and that's actually what we're going to be seeing more commonly uh, going forward. You only really get this special stuff, like the curly braces for the built-in Python um, types. And, and so this this works fine, right? I mean, people write code this way um, often enough, but but it's kind of confusing, right? If I'm down at the end, I just want to figure out well, what is M1? What is P1? If I print the type of both of those, both of them will say it's a it's a dictionary. And so what we want to do is we want to instead of using dictionary for everything. Uh, create new types uh, for different kinds of information. And so let me let me show you just how I might create um, a new type for people. <coughs> so the syntax like this in its most minimalist form is I say class. Um, cl class is really uh, uh, a certain kind of type, right? Most types are actually classes. So I cl say class, and then I say the new name of my new type, which is person, uh, and then colon, and then after that, there's a lot of things I could put, and, uh, and maybe it's hundreds of lines after that, honestly. And we're going to be learning more about what can go there. Um, here in the simplest form, I'm just saying pass. And, um, and just remember what pass does. Pass means do nothing. And why would we need a special uh, kind of statement to do nothing? 
Well, Python doesn't like emptiness after a colon, right? So we do that to just, you know, make Python happy, uh, but really there's no extra information inside of this class. And so then the way I create person objects from the person type or class is that, well, I say the type name, person, and then I put parentheses after it. So it's really a lot like a, a function call. I can almost think of it as a, a, as a function that I'm calling and it's returning a new object to me. Right? It's returning a new person object. And then after that, I can um, I can add some information to it. And, and the difference, well, let me just go back here. Right? I saw I saw what it looks like to put a key and a value um, inside of a dictionary. It's going to be a lot like that, but a little bit more elegant. In particular, this part right here, bracket, quote, key, quote, and then bracket again is going to be simpler. What we'll do is we'll say something like this. We'll say e1.fname uh, equals Joseph, and, and so on and so forth. And we can uh, set that for each of them. So you can see it's a lot like having keys and values, uh, but the vocabulary is a little bit different. Um, here on the left, this f name, instead of being a key, uh, I'm going to call that an attribute name. And this right part, instead of those being values, like in a dictionary, uh, these are going to be attribute values. So um, attributes are kind of very similar to uh, keys and values. It's the same concept, but a different vocabulary. And, and so there's lots of advantages of doing it this way, and we're going to be getting into those. Um, maybe kind of a small advantage is right down here. If I put off the type of this, it's not going to say dictionary. It's going to say P3 is referring to a person object, and, 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 and that's just like a very small benefit. We're going to see many more. Uh, now, a couple things here. Uh, in the previous course, 301 or 220, um, we learned another way to create new types. That was name tuples in record class. We don't teach that every semester, uh, but uh, let me just clarify some differences here. When we learned about name tuples, name tuples were immutable. You could create this new type, and when you created objects from it, you couldn't change those objects after you were created. Here, we are allowed to mutate objects that we create from classes, right? So I could change somebody's name or more likely, if I have something like an age attribute, I could change the age um, over time. Maybe somebody's got older. Um, also, these attribute names are not fixed at the time of creation, and I can keep adding more attributes if I want, although that's kind of an unusual pattern that we won't usually do. One last thing here I want to point out, which is kind of a problem that we're not going to solve immediately, is notice I have a, a typo here. Right in the first person, Joseph, uh, I capitalize F name. Probably not what I wanted, since usually I'm not doing that. Um, this code runs fine, but eventually we're going to learn some ways to touch that problem uh, before it creates issues for us. So let me really just keep hammering on this um, analogy between uh, objects created from classes and, and dictionary objects uh, by showing a uh, code um, that's kind of parallel between these three. Okay, so um, in each of these cases, I'm trying to create these point objects, and points are in this two-dimensional space, so each point um, should have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. And so on the left example, uh, I'm just saying d equals a new object of type dictionary. And then over here on the right, I have this class point. And then I'm going to show two different ways to use, use that. Right. So here on the left, I say p equals a new point object. Well, and actually the same over here, right? but these examples are different. So I'm going to show these kind of three analogous things we can do. OK. If I want to put values in a dictionary, I do it just like this, right? I say d of x equals 3, so on and so forth. I, I can put things in there besides integers, too. I don't know. I really saw we have an f name would be a string. Um, there's a function built into Python called set attribute. And, and the way I can do that is I can pass it three things. First, I pass it the object I want to modify, and an attribute name, and an attribute value, right? So, oh. So this, these things are very analogous, right, these first lines. Um, now, the other way I can use um, set attributes is just like this. I could say p.attribute name equals 3. And that's generally going to be preferred. Uh, that's kind of only special use case we'll have here. But I think this kind of more tightly brings together the idea that, um, that objects created from classes are really uh, kind of fancy dictionaries, right? And when we see this syntax is more common, it's just kind of easy to forget that. It's really the same thing internally. 
Um, we can also pull values out, right? And so if I have a dictionary, right, I do the same thing, the same way I'm setting it. Um, there's a get adder function built into Python, and I can say, well, here's my object, here's my attribute name, and that will return back to me uh, the attribute value associated with x. In this case, I guess it would be three. Right, so I can work with that, or I can use this other syntax that's going to be more common. Right, I can say p.x plus p.y. Um, the last thing I can do is I can check if a certain t is in my dictionary using the n operator. Right? I can say is z and d. And so for the second approach, right, we can use has adder. I can say does the p object have the z attribute, and that will return either true or false. Um, and uh, then it turns out that this third style, which we prefer, uh, doesn't really have uh, have an equivalent to that. Right? So special styles are a little more limited, even though this is what we'll usually be um, doing. There's also some limitations here. When I'm doing this second style, um, I could really use whatever I want in those strings for the attribute names. Uh, that's not really recommended because when we're using this style over here on the right, which is cleanest, um, attribute names have to be things that would also be valuable, uh, um, would also be uh, valid as variable names. Right? So I couldn't have like a space and attribute name over here, even though set adder would allow that. Okay, so we're going to avoid set adder and get adder for the most part, unless uh, we don't really know what the attribute name names are in advance, which is kind of a special case. Okay, so I'm going to do some coding examples and um, to illustrate a number of different uh, principles of object-oriented programming. And, and for these, I'm going to be creating two classes, a dog class and a cat class. And, um, and so at least in this first video, I'm just going to do this first thing. I'm going to look at how we can create these special functions uh, called methods and, and really try to motivate why we want this. So I'm going to head over here to my, um, to my Jupyter Notebook. Let, let, let me make this a little bit larger. And, uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dog type. And initially, we're not going to have anything here, at least for a while. And um, let me let me create a dog down here. I'll say dog one equals a new dog, dog two equals a new dog. And um, if I if I want to put off my dogs, they look like this, and a little bit funny, right? Um, or if I wanted to, I could also say, well, what is the type of dog? And then you can see that okay, well, it's uh, of type dog inside of this main notebook. Okay, so I have my dogs, and um, I can, if I like, I can give them some attributes, right? So the attributes I will give are, uh, let me see here. So I'll say that, um, you know, dog one, dot name equals Fido, and maybe I'll give them an age too, so dog one, dot age uh, equals, um, we'll say it's a puppy. Uh, let me set some things for dog two. Dog two dot name equals um uh we'll call it Sam dog two dot age equals we'll say Sam is kind of um an uh, older older dog we'll say he's twelve and and if I put off these dogs again right it's still not really showing me um, any of that eventually we'll learn how we can write some stuff up in here to get something more useful pointed out so I can tell what's going on with the dogs uh, now it's very common that when I have a new type. There's going to be a bunch of functions related to working um, with that type. So, for example, one function that I might have is something like a speak function um, that will make the dogs bark. Right. So, uh, when I have this, I'm going to pass in a dog to my speak fun function, and you know I could just make the dog bark, um, or what else could I do? Um, maybe it should depend on you know how old the dog is. So maybe I don't want the dog to just bark, I want to know how old is the dog, and then uh, what is the dog's name. So maybe I'll do something like this, I'll say something like, um, uh, you know, if dog.age is less than two, um, it's a puppy, so we might bark, you know, a lot of times, right? So it's kind of my experience with puppies. Um, if it's an older dog, let's say the dog um, it is older than 10, um, and then maybe the dog is starting to get kind of grumpy, so I'm going to say grrr, and um, otherwise it's just a normal about barking dog, so I'll just say down here, bark. And then for each of these, maybe I'd like to print off um, uh, what the name of the dog is, so I'm going to say dog.name, 
And then the same thing down here, right? So I can see, see which dog is speaking. Okay. So it sounds good. And if I want to call this, well, what can I do? I can come down here and I can say, let's make dog to speak. And, uh, and Sam, Sam, I guess, is an older dog, so Sam says, grr. Uh, let, let me try to make the first dog speak. And um, well, apparently I have some sort of attribute error. But what happened here? So um, I can see that while I was calling this speak function, and so then inside of the speak function, I got here dog.age. Dog object has no attribute age. And um, so coming back up here to look at Fido, I see the problem is that I, I have, have this typo here. Right? I, I meant to have a lowercase age, right? So I'll do that. I'll, I'll say age, and now, now it's actually working. And, um, and so that's better, right? So um, how can we make sure we don't make kind of silly mistakes like that? Well, what's very common is that we'll have a function that does all this stuff for us, right? I, I guess what, what is bad about this example is that when I look at when I crashed, I was crashing on line 20, which is right here. This is where I crashed, but my bug was in a completely different place back here, and that's bad, right? It's kind of takes longer to debug if we're crashing at a different place than our bug occurred. And so I always think about how we can write code to uh, crash earlier uh, rather than later. And so what we'll do to avoid this is we're going to create uh, another function, which I'm going to call init, which is going to do this kind of stuff for us, right? To make sure that we're always using uh, consistently name and age and, and the capitalization thereof. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass in a dog. I'm going to pass in a name. I'm going to pass in an age. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these things as attributes to the dog. So I'm going to say dog dot name equals name. Right. So whatever I pass to here. It is going to go to dog.name. And, and since I'm always going to create my dogs using this init function, then uh, I'm always going to be spelling name the same way. I kind of centralize this. I'm not going to make kind of silly mistakes like that. And uh, so it kind of looks like strange code, but you're going to see this kind of thing all the time. And I do the same thing dog.age equals age. And, and then down here, well, what do I do? I can just say init. I want to init dog1 with Fido, and he's a puppy. And then the same thing with this dog. Right? So I'm going to admit the dog too. And that will be Sam, who's age 12. And so that works fine. And that works fine. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. Um, let, me, let me introduce another problem that we are going to fix. So I, I have my dog, right? And uh, maybe let me just... Uh, let me, let me think about adding a cat. How can I add a cat? I'm going to add a cat down here. Well, let, me, let me just clean up some of this code uh, for a moment. So I'm going to do this. Well, let, let's create a cat. So I'm going to say class cat. Nothing needs to go there. And um, just like there's a, a speak function for the dog, I might wish for there to be a speak function for the cat. So I'm going to say define speak, I'm going to take in a cat, and, um, and, and I guess I'm just going to be lazy here, I'm just going to, you know, we can maybe add more features later, but let's just say all cats go meow. Um, so let's try creating a cat, right? so I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to even do this init thing for a while, because I'm not going to have any attributes here. I'm going to say uh, c equals cat, and I'm going to make my cat speak. Okay, so, so that's all fine, right? But Here's what I'm going to wonder. What happens if I want to make my dog speak again? Right, so I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm just going to say speak dog1. I want you to think for a moment what will probably happen here uh, when I run this. Well, let's give it a try. Well, let's pause me for a while if you need to think about it. But uh, Let's try running and see what happens. I run it, and well, now what I see is kind of very funny is my cat is going meow. I, I definitely did something wrong. And the problem is that uh, I made both my functions speak, right? I named it here. And, and when I named it the second time, what happened is that this function basically replaced my first one 
Right, so this is the only speak function I have right now. Uh, now there's different solutions to this, but one solution is that I could name these different things. I could tell this like, you know, the dog speak and cat speak. And um, in some programming languages, that would be the appropriate thing to do. But now I can actually see what we're going to put inside of these classes. Right? One of the beauties of um, classes is that we can put functions inside of them. And when we do that, we can reuse the same uh, function name. Right? So I'm going, to put, I'm going to put speak up here. Right? I'm going to tab this in, like so. And then the same thing for cat. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the cat inside of here. And because these are inside of the classes, uh, these two functions are now, did I have that little bit too tab? They're now, um, uh, they're different. They're different functions with the same, same name. Okay, so that's great. And, and, and actually there's a special name for these functions now. Once I put a function inside of the class, it's a method, right? So what I, what I might say is that the dog class has a speak method and the cat class also has a speak method. So let me try running this when I say kernel uh, restart and run all and see where I am in my code. And, and what I'm saying now is that I don't have speak defined, which I guess is on line 23 here. And that actually kind of makes sense, right? Because, well, I have two different speaks, and how do I know which one is which? And uh, the answer is simple. If I want to run speak inside of dog, and I have to say dog type dot speak, right? And, and Fido barks like that. And then let's have the, the cat speak, right? So I could say cat.speak, and um, I lost my cat, didn't I? So let me create my cat again. I'm going to make, um, just call, call him C1, and make the cat1 speak. And, and these both work fine, right? I can choose. Am I calling dog speak, or am I calling uh, cat speak? Right? So it kind of takes off the pressure on us of coming up with all these different names or different functions if we just make them methods in different in classes. Okay. Now, I, one thing I want to note here is that the way I'm kind of doing this is bad. Right? So this is an example of bad code. Um, this function here is uh, uh, not great either. I'm eventually going to be showing better ways to do these things, but at least for now I want to focus on the mechanics rather than good style. Is I think once we understand what's going on, then we'll focus on how to kind of make all of this more um, elegant. Right? So I, I just want to you know, kind of uh, be aware of that if you're taking notes. Now, why is this not great? I'll answer that at least in this video and I'll wrap up. Um, it's weird because I'm trying to pair out this off, right? If, I, if I'm trying to call speak on a dog, then I better use the dog version. If I'm calling speak on a cat, on a cat I, I better do the cat version. And if I do something like this, cat.speak, and, and I say, let's say dog1, uh, guess what? That's actually working, right? There's no reason it can't, right? I say cat dot speak, and I'm passing this dog. So dog one gets passed off to this method. And so the dog one object goes to here. And it turns out that nothing in this code um, causes there to be, be a problem, right? I mean, it's, so it's kind of weird, right? It runs, but definitely not what I want. And so what I'm not going to do now, what I'm going to end on, is I'm going to say, well, what happened if I do dog dot speak? Of cat and um, and maybe maybe let me just uh, delete this so I'm not sure what's happening. So what will happen if I do that? And so I'm going to paste this code in, in the lecture document. I want you to think about it and then eventually run it to confirm uh, if your intuition is right. What will happen if we pass a cat into this method?